Broadcasting Company brings you transcribed the new Martin and Lewis show. Our guest tonight, Bob Hope. And featuring Flo McMichael, Mike Roy, the Martin Gales, Dick Stabile and his orchestra, and starring Dean Martin. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. And Jerry Lewis. I'm the singer on the show, and you're the comedian. Remember that? Then, uh, so stay in your place, will you? What do you want to stop pushing me around for? The show is all even started, and already you're trying to be the big man. Go ahead, kick me. Step on me. Wipe your feet on me. You're always poking fun at me. Oh, Jerry, stop. I don't poke any fun at you. Think of all the times I've defended you. You defended me? Of course, many times. You're so ungrateful. Ungrateful? Well, what did you ever do for me? Give me a for instance. I'll gratitude you. <laughs> I found out tonight that 70-30 isn't an even split. <laughs> now, let's get back to that 60-40. What do you say? Okay, sure, Jerry. Whatever you say, pal. If you want 60-40, you get it. Now, is it all right if I go ahead and sing a song? You don't mind to give me the 60-40? No, it's all Just right. Just like this, you said, and it's easy. not even a word. <laughs> go ahead, sing three, four notes. <laughs> Pack up all my cares and woes Here I go while I'm singing low Bye, bye, blackbird Where somebody waits for me Sugar sweet and honey, so is she Bye, bye, my blackbird No one here can love and understand me all the hard luck stories they all hand me. So make the bed, honey, like a light. I'm coming home late tonight. Blackbird, bye bye. No one here can love or understand me. All the hard luck stories. They all hand me So make the bed Light the light I'm coming home late tonight Blackbird Bye-bye As you know, ladies and gentlemen, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis are two young men who overnight have become the nation's comedy hit. And they're still rather dazed by it all. Now we take you back a few hours to this afternoon. We find the boys in their apartment getting ready, somewhat nervously, to go to NBC for their first radio show. Well, Jerry, this is our big day. We're actually going to do our first broadcast on NBC. Now, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's wonderful, Dean. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Aren't you happy about it? Happy? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, buck up, Jerry. It's our big chance. Yeah, the opportunity of a lifetime. The greatest moment of our lives. We go down NBC, we walk out on a stage, and face all those people. And Dean... Yeah? I wish I was dead. <laughs> well, it's the phone. It must be NBC again. What cowards we are. Why are we afraid to do our own radio show? After all, how big an egg can we lay? How big? Well, if we took a large hen and got it to hold back for two years... All right, Jerry, hold on. <laughs> Oh, we've been acting like two frightened mice all day. We've got an ironclad contract to do the show. We've got to talk to NBC sometime. You're right. I'm not a frightened mouse. Answer the phone. Oh, come on, Jerry. You answer it. Dean Martin, I will tell you why I will not answer the phone. Indubitably, that call is from NBC. 
And it is indubitably they want to know where the H-E-C-K we are because they are spending thousands and thousands of dollars and money <laughs> to build a sensational comedy and musical extravaganza around us. And if they think we are that important, why don't they call us? Jerry, they are calling us. Who else could it be besides NBC? Who else? Well, it could be a wrong number, a quiz show. Hey, a quiz show. They give you money. Just for asking a few questions. Give me that phone. Hello, 1492, Marie Antoinette and sulfuric acid. Ship the money. <laughs> Jerry, we got to get down to NBC right away. Let's go. Dean. Yeah? I'm scared. Look, we've done all right so far. We shouldn't be afraid. We did all right in nightclubs, didn't we? Yeah, but those people pay $10 cover charge, so they had to like us. But at a radio show, the audience gets in for free, and at those prices, they can afford to hate us. <laughs> but, Jerry, this is what we've dreamed about. All the things we fought for. Who knows? This could make us famous. Yeah, famous. We could even become important actors. Yeah, important actors. Our names in lights, celebrities, stars in pictures. Yeah, names in lights, celebrities, stars in pictures. I can see it all. Big hits in nightclubs. We're famous. Everybody wants us. Hal Wallace signs us for Paramount Pictures. NBC signs us for a radio show. We flop. <laughs> Nobody wants us. Hal Wallace won't speak to us. Paramount hates us. We spend our savings. We can't get work. We're tramping the streets, starving. We stop and press our noses against the bakery window. And Dean... What? I'm hungry. <laughs> Jerry, snap out of it. we got to get dressed and go. Well, I'm almost ready, Dean, but gee, I start to shake all over when I think of tonight being on the same show with Bob Hope. Gee, he's a big star, Dean, and well... Oh, don't worry. We'll get through it somehow. And by the way, Jerry, when you meet Bob Hope, don't make any cracks about his nose. No cracks about his nose? No, just shake hands with it and let it go at that. <laughs> Hey, that was a sterling one. <laughs> Look, Dean, you're the singer and I'm the comedian, right? That's right. You're supposed to sing and I'm supposed to tell the jokes and get the laughs. And yet you just told a joke and got a big laugh. <laughs> Don't do it no more. <laughs> Come on, let, let's go down and be Oh, not so fast. Now, let me take a look at you first. Stand up. Wash your hands. Yes, partner. Wash your face. Yes, sir. Behind your ears. Look, I'm just going to broadcast. I'm not going to get married. <laughs> anyway, what about you? Did you bathe? Well, of course. I take a bath every day. You take a bath every day? <laughs> well, of course. Oh, Dean. I'm so unworthy of you. <laughs> ah, come on. Let's get out of this apartment. Who is it? It's the maid. I have to come in and clean the apartment. Okay, come on in. We're, we're just leaving anyway. Oh, my goodness. Just look at the condition of this room. Well, what's the matter with it? It's clean. <laughs> well, then that's a break for you. you. You have no work to do. I don't have any work to do. That's fine. I'm the maid, and I'm supposed to clean the apartments every day. And if your apartment isn't dirty, then I don't have to clean it. And if I don't have to clean your apartment, I won't have anything to do for a half hour. So I'll go out in the hall, and I'll light a cigarette, and the manager will smell the smoke, and he'll come up to me, and he'll say, what are you doing smoking a cigarette in the hall? And I'll say, I haven't anything to do right now. And he'll say, why don't you clean the apartments? And I'll say, I didn't have to clean the apartments. And he'll say, oh, you don't have to clean the apartments, and you'll get mad and fire me, and all because your apartment is clean. <laughs> It's people like you who cause unemployment. <laughs> Miss, th there's one thing I don't understand. What's that? Are you for real? Ah, <laughs> uh, Miss, we're not trying to get you fired. Do the best you can. We have to leave, so come on, Jerry, let's go. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Now what? Uh... There's a discrepancy in the bathroom. <laughs> a what? <laughs> One of you has to get married. The towels say his and hers, and you're a his and his. Well, okay, okay. Look, just put in two hises, and that'll fix it. Oh, it's not as simple as that. If I give you another his, then I'll have an extra hers. And at the end of the week, I'll have 148 hises and 149 herses. And the manager won't know why there's more herses than hises, because you don't know how many hises and she's there in the building anyway. Okay, take all the towels out, all of them. From now on, we'll dry on newspapers. <laughs> You're odd, 
people. We ain't odd. We're entertaining. We're Martin and Lewis, and we got a radio show to do in a few minutes. Oh, you're on the radio. What do you do? Well, one of us is a singer. And the other guy's the funniest comedian you ever heard. Tells big jokes, kills the people, gets a big laugh, and he screams, and people laugh, and he's so funny. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> which is which? <laughs> All right, come on, Jerry. Let's go to NBC. Folks, let me ask a question. What about your future? Will it be a secure one? Well, the best way to guarantee security and happiness is to make your savings automatic and to be sure your savings are in an investment which is absolutely safe. So tomorrow, join the payroll savings plan where you work. Under this plan, a sum is set aside from each paycheck, whatever amount you decide. And as it accumulates, it is invested in United States savings bonds in your name. U.S. savings bonds, the finest, safest investment in the world today. You'll be astounded how quickly those bonds will pile up, ready to be used for an emergency. Meanwhile, they grow in value year by year. So see about the part payment payroll savings plan tomorrow. Or if you are your own boss, ask your bank about the bond a month plan. Either way is a sure way to a happy, secure future. And you'll be joining with 80 million other Americans who are already shareholders in the greatest country on earth. Buy United States savings bonds. Well, this is NBC, Jerry. I'll park the car and you go on ahead. I'll wait for you, Dean. Oh, what are you afraid of? Buck up, Jerry. I never saw anyone so timid as you are. I can't help it, Dean. I'm so worried I got butterflies in my stomach. Now, take an aspirin. The butterflies will go away. I took an aspirin. They're playing ping pong with it. <laughs> go ahead, Jerry. I'll meet you in front of the studio. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Stand in line, folks, for the Martin and Lewis show. The line will move inside the studio in a few minutes. Come on, Myrtle. Let's get in line. All right, Louise. Oh, I just hope this Martin and Lewis show we're going to see is as good as Ladies Be Seated. You know, Myrtle, they've got the cutest comedian on Ladies Be Seated. Really? What does he do? He pulls the chairs out from under them. Oh, how ridiculous. You're always bringing me to these silly radio shows, Louise. Like that program, Life Begins at 80. What a foolish idea. Well, what's wrong with it? Louise, if I thought life began at 80, I'd have committed suicide 65 years ago. <laughs> pardon, pardon me, ladies. Can you tell me how to get into the Martin and Lewis show? We're going in, young man. Get in line behind us. We always come to see these new comedians the very first week. Oh, swell. Yes, we have to. They usually don't last for a second week. <laughs> Well, you don't know Martin and Lewis. They're the best comedians in the whole world. And I say that for two very important reasons. Bread and butter. <laughs> oh, I'm so anxious to see Dean Martin. You know, Myrtle, that Dean Martin's the whole show as far as I'm concerned. Mm, he really has talent. Now, wait a minute, lady. It takes two to make a team, Martin and Lewis. That's the team. They got to stick together. That's the way it is with any team. Where would Fibber be without Molly? Where would Kaiser be without Fraser? And where would Drew Pearson be without President Drew? That... <laughs> Doesn't quite fit, does it? <laughs> hey, Jerry, I parked the car. Let's go inside. What are you standing in this line for? Oh, oh it's Dean Martin! <laughs> Hello, girls. Uh, Mr. Martin, don't tell us that this odd-looking young man is your partner. <laughs> That's right. He's my partner, Jerry Lewis. You see, Myrtle, I told you that Dean Martin was the whole show. Oh, now, just a minute, ladies. Jerry isn't so bad. In fact, he's a very nice guy. He's a wonderful guy. Why, Jerry's the important half of our act. He's the talent. He's the one who gets all the laughs. He's the one the critics rave about. He's the one the people love. Oh, what a hand. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We have to go, ladies. Uh, come on, Jerry. We've got to rehearse. What are you going to sing, Mr. Martin? I'd like to get you on a slow boat to China. It's a deal. Get the tickets and I'll meet you at the dock. Come on, Jerry. Let's get inside the studio. Oh, here's Mr. Martin. 
now. Step right up to the microphone, Mr. Martin. We're ready for your song. Yeah, you sing, and I'll lead the band. Lead the band, Jerry? Do you know anything about leading a band? Do I know anything about leading a band? I just suggested leading the band, and you have the nerve to ask me if I know anything about it. <laughs> what do you? Well, no. <laughs> but don't worry about me. You take care of the singing, and I'll take care of the conducting. <laughs> You'll take care of the what? I said, you take care of the singing, and I'll take care of the conducting. Why do you leave that last word up in the air? It's the end of a sentence. You're through with it. There's a period there. You don't need it anymore. You, you would say, I'm going to the corner, not, I'm going to the corner. <laughs> I mean, who talks like this? Well, you talk the way you want. I talk that way because, listen. <laughs> okay, Jerry, if you're going to lead the band, go ahead and lead it. All right, men. One, two... He made up this lullaby Just to sing it to you Soon as you learn this lullaby You can sing it to your dolly too Ta-da, ta da ta la Play peekaboo with a star Hush you by baby when shadows creep Dreamland is not very far Ta da ta la da ta la Just like the angel you are Rock a by baby Now you're asleep Play with a star. Just like the angel you are Rock by baby Now you're asleep Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da ta 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 Beautiful. Incidentally, folks, Dean Martin has recorded that number for Capitol Records. Friends, a good education takes money. Lots of it. And certainly you'll want your boy or girl to have every educational advantage when he starts out on his own, won't you? Well, to be sure, the money will be there when you need it. Start an educational fund now. Invest in United States savings bonds. They're guaranteed by your government. If they're lost, stolen, or destroyed, they'll be replaced without charge. And they grow in value until in ten short years... You get back $4 for every $3 you invested. Now, that's real profit, isn't it? So plan a fund for your child's education. Join the payroll savings plan where you work, or if you are self-employed, the bond a month plan where you bank. A steady investment in savings bonds now will ensure your child's college training in the future. Buy United States savings bonds. Well, why not, Jerry? Sounds like the Bob Hope Show. Hey, Dick, Camille, hold it. This is 
the Martin and Lewis show starring those two sensational partners, Bob Hope and Tom Cruise. Thank you. Yes, sir, those two sensational partners... Bob Hope and Swan Soap, the famous floater and the famous sinker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to perform a very pleasant task. As you must know by now, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis are two young and very talented fellows whom NBC has adopted. I'm sure they'll bring you many hours of top entertainment, and I'm sincerely honored to be here and welcome to the network the handsome, talented, gorgeous voice, Dean Martin. Well, thanks, Bob, for all the wonderful compliments. And his partner, Jerry Lewis. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Now, thanks, Bob, for, uh, I don't get no compliments. Oh. Jerry, is that any way to talk to Bob after he comes all the way down here to wish us luck? I think it's very swell of him. It. Oh, it's nothing. I didn't have anything else to do this evening. It's the maid's night off. <laughs> but I know how it is when you're starting a new show. It seems like only yesterday that I was worrying about my radio program. In fact, it was only yesterday. <laughs> Well, we, we really appreciate this, Bob. We, we figured we need plenty of help to succeed in Hollywood. Oh, I'm sure you're going to be very successful, Dean. Well, uh, how about Jerry? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Hope. Stop making with the jokes like that. You promised you'd make us seem funny. Well, don't worry about it, Jerry. No comedian's ever going to top that top of yours. <laughs> Tell me, who does your hair? Are you bangy? <laughs> Nobody does it. I just get out of bed, and if I can't see anything, I know my hair is cold. <laughs> well, Jerry can't help the way his hair looks, Bob. You see, when his parents found him on the doorstep, they threw him away and raised the fuller brush sample. Well, that's hair, huh? He, he looks like the boy with a green Brillo. <laughs> What's the matter with my hair? It's hair, ain't it? Are you asking or telling? <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's just that you look like you're standing with your back to a high wind. It just grows that way, and I'm not standing with my back to any high wind. On the contrary. <laughs> look, Bebop... Were you born, or did your mother miss a question on truth or consequences? Listen, what's wrong with it if I happen to like my hair rather short? Rather short? What does the barber use, scissors or sandpaper? Oh, <laughs> uh, the barber uses scissors, but he works from the inside. <laughs> and, he, and he sings, too, you know. Can I go now? Yeah, anytime. <laughs> That's all we can get with that. Go, it's all right. Well, it just so happens I have to keep my ass short, Mr. Hope. Every time I let it get any longer than this, my knees buckle. What? It didn't pay. Can I go now? <laughs> well, I want to tell you, you boys are going to be working pretty hard from now on, so, Jerry, you've got to build up your strength. What do you suggest, Mr. Hope? Put something in your pot, boy. <laughs> Oh, Jerry will fill out when he gets a little older, Bob. You know, he's not as old as some comedians. <laughs> Got another high wind here. <laughs> Don't look at me when you say that, you West Point victim -one. <laughs> You're looking at a man of 31, you know. <laughs> no laugh? <laughs> 31. 31. <laughs> 31. He keeps doing it till he gets a good reading. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Hope. I saw your birth certificate, and you're not 31. Jerry? Don't try to stop me, Dean. The birth certificate said born in 1910, and this is 1949. You're not 31. You're 35. <laughs> Thank you, Joel Kupperman. <laughs> nice counting. Did you hire an income tax man this year, or are you leaving us soon? 
Well, see how young he is, Bob? It, it was embarrassing when we were working in nightclubs. It was embarrassing? Yes. After we finished our act, Jerry would step up to the bar and order three fingers of Mead's formula with a pablum chaser. <laughs> I know. The other night he was on my show. After every joke he told, I had to throw him over my shoulder and burp him. <laughs> Now listen, you two. <laughs> it's all right for you to stand there and vituperate my adolescence. But I will have you know that Jared Lewis is capable of exuding as much sophistry as anyone else. <laughs> Jerry. Yes? Your safety pin is unfastened again. <laughs> yeah, and you can see the inside of your head. <laughs> Are just jealous because when I go over to Paramount, Jane Russell holds me on her knee. What do you think she holds me? <laughs> or? <laughs> you peaked. <laughs> you know, Bob, we envy you making pictures with all the big stars. Did you have a hard time getting started in the show business? Hard, Dean? Yeah. You know, one time in New York, I lived for six months on nothing but donuts. Every time I'd ask an agent for a job, I'd get so nervous I'd break out in powdered sugar. <laughs> Fortunately, I had a partner who broke out in cold coffee. Really, really, Bob, we'll always remember one thing, though. You were so wonderful to us when we first came to Paramount, when we were poor and hungry. Why, we couldn't even afford to split one of those 50-cent box lunches. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You call it nothing, making us a special one for a quarter? <laughs> Well, I came out all right. I just used less swan soap in the salad. <laughs> hey, you boys are making a movie now. How do you like acting, Jerry? Oh, it's great, Bob. What scenes I have. What lines I deliver. What emotion I portray. Why, one scene I say... One scene... Saying... <laughs> <laughs> Start over. It's tape. <laughs> Crosby starts ten times a night. Go ahead. I better hurry. We'll be here till Christmas. All right. Why, yes. <laughs> now, really, in one scene, I say to the girl, Bob, I say, the world may think of me as a nobody, but Gwendolyn, in your arms, I'm a bird soaring up in the blue. I'm a flower pushing up my head through the soil. I'm a moth floating helplessly into your burning flame. Boy, that's a moating, isn't it? How do you like that, Bob? Hello, Mort. <laughs> Jerry, tell me one thing. What's that? Are you for real? <laughs> and now you just wait a minute, Mr. Hope. That's my line. I don't care if you are Bob Hope. No comedian is supposed to steal another comedian's lines. Okay, runt. What are you going to do about it? Hello, Mort. <laughs> Say, Bob, we saw you in a picture. No kidding. With Dorothy Lamortia tonight, it must be exciting working with her. Oh, it's nothing, really. My Adam's apple ought to stop jumping any day now. <laughs> How about that scene where Dorothy was dancing the hula? She started out slowly, but when she shifted into second, wow. <laughs> you, should, you should have seen the part they cut out. She was in overdrive. <laughs> You know, I bet that film is still flopping around on the cutting room floor. Yeah, I get the good one. Yeah. <laughs> I had one that I thought was pretty good, but you ruined it right now. Would you mind trying your line once again? All right. You know, I bet the film is still flopping around on the cutting room floor. Yeah, only last week they finally beat it to death with a stick. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Say, by the way, fellas, I'm throwing a little reception for you guys tonight after your show. Oh, a reception for us? You hear that, Jerry? Yeah, can you get some girls or is this too sudden? We'll be... <laughs> oh, step all of us, nothing at all. <laughs> just, what just that a <laughs> Would you mind? You're not exactly Saratan to me, you know. <laughs> well, will you please read Lampshade Head? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You can cut that line out, too, I guess, too, huh? Yes! Oh, my. 
We'll be there, Bob. The kind of girls we know, nothing's too sudden. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Wait, I'll get my hat and go with you. And another thing... <laughs> and another thing, fellas, it's going to be a formal party. It's formal? Yeah, bring your own pool cue. <laughs> it's really going to be a swell affair. Sounds good, Bob. Are you going to have champagne? I get a straight line. <laughs> it's funny how those strange words came out all right, you know? I don't want you guys to get upset, but I don't like how well you're working together. <laughs> Don't worry, I can never match that hair. I'm having trouble growing it back here now. <laughs> Would you mind uh, feeding me again, if you don't mind? Sounds good, Bob. Are you going to serve champagne? No, I couldn't get any champagne, so I'm serving 7-Up and Coke. Nobody will know the difference. Wait a minute, Bob. No one would take 7-Up and uh, Coke in preference to champagne? I would, but I'm only 22 years old. What do I know? <laughs> this kid's really going to live tonight. At midnight, he'll be drinking Ovaltine for Margaret O'Brien's slipper. <laughs> It's awfully nice of you, Bob, to invite us. I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> well, Good I hope you folks are enjoying minutes. our career. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awfully nice. It's awfully nice. I'll get this line in yet, yeah. boss. <laughs> I hope you have it right when you get your chance. Go ahead. <laughs> It's awfully nice of you to come over for our hour show. <laughs> and to invite us to your party. Who's going to be there? We'll need an hour to hatch this thing. Where are we? <laughs> You've got me confused. You've read every line on this page. <laughs> and, and, and after looking it over, you can have them. <laughs> Try this one. May I, may, I ask, may I ask a question? I didn't get your I name. Think... <laughs> Why not? Why not? I'm helping to kill you, too. You might as well. Step in, Jerry. Step in. And Jerry talk. Colon. Listen. Uh, I just... <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to tell you, fellas, that the, the, man, the man in the control room is laughing, but he's burning. <laughs> We're very lucky if he's still with us, isn't he? <laughs> he must be nailed down. Go ahead. Yes, Bob, who is going yes, to be in well, the yes, is that it? <laughs> this, this may put Mortimer out of business, you know. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm sorry, Dean. I didn't mean no, to ignore you. I just you. said it's awfully you nice. You sing like mad, don't you? Where would you say it? Right now, I wish I were singing. Look, it's awfully nice of you, Bob. Yes. There, that's you. To invite us to your party. Now, who's going to be there? Oh, I've asked a lot. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> I love those lines where they go upstairs for the last row. <laughs> so long, goodbye. Here's your penis. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like getting a fresh start. Um, uh, I say, are you sure Abbott and Costello started this way? <laughs> Still talking, isn't that a doll? Who's gonna be there? At the party. Huh? <laughs> oh, they're gonna do a lot of cuts. Here we go, here we go. All right, let's go. Well, I'll tell you. All right, why don't you read your line just for right. tape? Well, uh, well um, it's awfully nice of you, Bob, to invite us to our party. Who's gonna be there? Oh, I've asked lots of important people. The only thing is, did Jerry know how to act at a party? Do I know how to act at a party? Why, one time in the back room of a barber shop. Jerry! <laughs> Bad libs get more. <laughs> Mighty quiet here. <laughs> I'm only waiting for the cue. I'm not moving, brother. 
Jerry, hold it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if this was an audition? <laughs> oh, CBS don't know how lucky they are. I was only thinking, maybe Jerry will be a little raucous. Raucous? Me? Don't ever worry about Jerry Lewis being raucous. I'll make more noise than anyone there. <laughs> Look, steel woolhead. I hope you understand I've invited big names, people of refinement and breeding and culture. Oh, that's all right. Refinement and breeding and culture pour out of me like sweat off a horse's neck. <laughs> it sounds like a peeping... You gonna pull another bladder, or are you through with that? Hey, one for me. I didn't do nothing. Maybe when I'm in the business as long as you. I doubt if you'll make it. I'm trying. You're a sweet boy, that's all. You really think so? I do. That's why I'm here. I'm not really after him. Say, uh... Where'd we stop? You know... <laughs> I don't know if I should go after this line or not. You know, he sounds like a peeping Tom who got his peep caught in a small keyhole. That's what I said. It's going to be... It's going to be quite a party. I asked Cary Grant, Randy Scott, Barbara Hutton. Barbara Hutton, the heiress? Will she be there? Well, no, she can't make it, but there'll be several girls from her store. <laughs> Really, I'd like to have a date with one of those big movie stars like Barbara Stanwyck, Elizabeth Scott, or Diana Lynn. You think you can fix me up? Not enough. <laughs> just a minute, Mr. Hope. There's just one thing I'd like to say to you. Perhaps I don't look as good as some others with a physique, but it's arbitrary to me to burp, piss, and for any one of those persons that shouldn't have... <laughs> the cops are here. Well, it was fun, radio, wasn't it? Those nightclubs are still going, boy. Oh. <laughs> Take it fresh, Jerry. Just a minute, Mr. Hope. There's just one thing I'd like you to... It's too close to the paper. I'd... I'd like you to know that people that have an opinion of someone that's got a physique like mine may not consider themselves more or less on the position that I am. Not about... I've known many people that consider themselves, but not me. When I'm well enough to arbitrate, then I'm not sure enough. <laughs> Would you mind repeating that? Yeah. <laughs> Say, never mind. I've got to go now. I'll see you at the party tonight. Well, okay. All kidding aside, uh, it was nice of you, Bob, to come down and help us get started. We really appreciate it. While we're talking this way, Bob, there's something Dean and I have been waiting, wanting to say to you for a long time. <laughs> What's that, Jerry? <laughs> well, Bob, we don't know what we'd have done without you since we arrived in Hollywood. You've always been willing to give us a helping hand when we lack courage and confidence. There was always you to go to. We could confide in you when we feel blue and all alone in the world. We could come to you with our troubles. And, Bob? Yeah? You're the type of guy we've always wanted for a mother. 